few years ago, I decided that I needed to build a crane for my shop. I started looking around on Google. I typed in shop jib crane and came up with a lot of results. There was some really, really nice production cranes that were way out of my price range. There was a lot of homemade stuff. I obviously wasn't the first person to undertake this project. So I started looking at the forums and the threads and some of the pictures and I came up with a list of features that I wanted on my crane and a design that would fit in my application. Perhaps the biggest help came from McMaster Cars website. They have a great selection of jib cranes so I found the largest one that I could fit into my space. I began reading and saw a link for the CAD drawings. This was perfect. It had all the dimensions that I needed. I combined all of these things and came up with this. A very basic design that would fit in my area. I figured out the best placement of the footing, marked it out, saw cut the concrete, drilled in some eye bolts, and lifted the concrete out with my forklift. I began excavating the footing and calculated it out to about 2.6 yards. This is about 9,000 pounds worth of concrete. My crane footing butted up against the existing footing from the center post in my shop. I brought in the crane column and began installing rebar. I welded on a small piece of angle to hold the weight of the crane. I rested it on this 4x6 beam propped up by small 2x4s so that I could fit my concrete trowels underneath. I kept it plumb throughout the process with tons of bracing and tie down straps and I checked it frequently. The main pivot of my crane utilizes two tapered roller bearings and a short piece of 2 and 3 16 axle shaft. These are very common in the Dana rear ends, which meant that parts would be readily available. Always a plus. The axle shaft had threads tapped in one side, which was perfect for holding it in place. The housing for the bearings was a piece of half inch wall tube that I machined to accept the bearings. The top pivot was a piece of quarter inch wall, one inch ID DOM tubing. I added a bronze thrust bearing and a grease cirque to keep all the movements smooth. For the top rod, I cut a ratcheting binder in half and robbed the threads and eye bolts and plug welded them into a piece of tubing. All of this combined made for a single handed, very smooth and easy operation. I utilized a piece of small diameter cable and some chain links to keep my cord out of the way. The main beam measures 8 inches tall by 6.5 inches wide with a half inch thickness and 10 feet of length. I picked it up locally as a remnant. The main column is double sleeved as it enters the concrete as I knew this would be a high stress area. All welding on the crane was done with 7018 rod. I think on this particular joint here, I have about five passes.
To counteract the effects of the heavy load, I added a rear truss out of 2 inch OD material. The hoist in the trolley, both Harbor Freight items, obviously not my first choice, but I can't complain. I've had nothing but luck with them. The trolley is heavily modified and reinforced as you can see, and the hoist is just a one ton capacity cable hoist. All said and done, I have nine feet of clearance from the bottom of my hook to my concrete floor. So far I haven't run into any capacity problems and it's done everything I've needed it to. Overall I'm very pleased with the project and use the crane often. As far as design and function goes, I'm very pleased with the end result. The only thing I would consider changing would be add more length. And I always thought it would be kind of cool to add some type of braking mechanism to lock it in a certain place. Well, thanks for watching, you guys. And this hasn't been an instructional or how-to by any means. So if you're going to build your own shop, do so at your own risk.